How's it going? My name is Austin Gill, and today I wanted to share with you a tip that I learned by looking at Tailwind's source code. So Tailwind is an atomic or utility CSS library. It's not the first of its kind, but it's currently the most popular. And if you're not familiar with atomic CSS, we'll take a look at it right now. So the general principle of Atomic CSS is you have one CSS rule per CSS class, and you can apply those classes to your element. And there's a couple of advantages to doing things this way. Specifically, if you wanted to have an element that combines all three of those classes that we've listed, you can do that by composing the classes together. And you don't have to write any more CSS. Now this isn't the actual interesting part. What I wanna show you next is. With Atomic CSS, you may want to have some classes that address complex or compound CSS rules, such as transforms. In this example, we have a transform and a scale class and we can combine those if we wanted to. The problem here is that we don't actually get the results that you may expect. If we inspect the element, we can see that the transform scale is overwriting the transform translate. And that makes sense because the nature of CSS says that uh, the later rule, assuming two rules have the same specificity, the later rule will be the one that takes over. So the transform overwrites the previous one. Now, if we wanted to, we could have a custom class that combines the two. But this actually goes against the principles of Atomic CSS by providing customized classes. That's not to say we can't have custom classes. In many cases, we may need them, but in this case, we actually don't. So I'll show you one way the Tailwind team addressed this issue because I thought it was rather clever. Instead of defining separate classes to control the transform, we can combine all of the transforms into one group of classes that define the transform in one place. Now I won't go through all of the different types of transforms, but I'll use these two as an example. The next question is what we use as the values inside of the transformations. And the answer is a CSS variable. And the trick is to pass a sane default as a fallback. So if we translate X, we can fall back to zero. And for scale, we can fall back to one. And then where we define the individual classes, we can assign those variables. Here you go. Just like that, all three of these elements that are being transformed are sharing the same transform rule, but the individual transforms are only being applied to the elements that have their respective classes. So there aren't a ton of CSS properties that work this way, but if you ever run into the need, now you know how to handle it. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you want more. And if you have any comments or questions, please throw them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you.